James Murango and the Senator for Malsabit County, Senator Mohamed Chute. So I don't know whether you still you have instructions. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome uh, the uh, NNGCS. Uh, thank you for finding time to come before the Senate. Uh, you are a frequent visitor to the Senate, and uh, we did thank you that you have uh, time. You don't postpone when you ask to come. So that is a good indication that you are very ready to serve this country. So we go to the first question from the member for Kirinyaga County. Senator Mbugwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to ask question number 007 on behalf of the distinguished senator for Kirinyaga, Senator James Murango. One, is the cabinet secretary aware of the breakdown of over 15 government-owned power transformers in Kirinyaga County between March and September 2023? And if so, could the cabinet secretary explain the reasons behind, behind it? And two, could the cabinet secretary explain the inordinate delay in replacing defective pa power transformers in Kirogo, Maendeleo, and Liagishiru village, villages within Moya constituency, despite multiple requests for their replacement? And three, uh, could the uh, cabinet secretary explain what measures the government has put in place to ensure the timely repair or replacement of defective power transformers? Thank you, Speaker. Yes, uh, you may proceed to respond to the question by Senator Fulminaga. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Speaker, uh, today, uh, members of the Senate, uh, good morning and happy to be here uh, this morning to respond to uh, the questions that have been raised. And like uh, has been said, uh, Honorable Chair, <coughs> As speaker, I am a frequent member here, and uh, thank you. And uh, happy to engage to address some of the challenges as we look forward to uh, building our country together. Uh, first one, uh, speaker, of following the letter dated February uh, 13th, uh, which was inviting us to come and respond to the uh, question which has been uh, articulated by the honorable member as to whether we are aware of the breakdown of over 15 government-owned power transformers in Kirinyaga County in the last six months and the reasons behind. Uh, and that, Chairman, I wish to note that uh, the above question had been, had, been, uh, had been asked under question number 059 on 4th October uh, 2023. Uh, honorable members, the ministry is aware, and these breakdowns uh, or the breakdown in those transformers have continuously been addressed through Kenya Power, replaced them once, reported. Breakdown of transformers has been experienced not only in Kirinyaga uh, County, but also in different counties and they have been occasioned by incidences of vandalism of transformers and earthing insulations, illegal connections, which when they are done without due respect to the capacities of those transformers, do cause overloading, and sometimes we lose transformers every so frequently because of those illegal connections and therefore overloading of the transformers. And uh, thirdly, the faults on the low voltage lines due to trees and uh, the challenge environmental issues uh, that happen and uh, causes breakdown sometimes from time to time. Uh, honorable members, to counter these incidences and improve on reliability of the grid, the government has put up the following measures. Continuous monitoring is done on the power network to ensure failed transformers are replaced in the shortest possible time. A listing of power installation as under critical infrastructure. As a result, there is a special police unit called the Energy Police Unit that is now mandated to protect all energy infrastructure all the way from generation, transmission to distribution. 
Um, honorable members, uh, let, let me just uh, give a small background of the challenge and why we are trying to play a catch-up uh, game in this area of transformers. Uh, we've had, like I mentioned, uh, and I'll mention in the next question, serious litigation on the procurement front. When power goes off and it's a transformer right now, it's expected that we should respond immediately because it's a critical uh, service supporting hospitals, supporting critical functions. And when we lose a transformer and we have a litigation on procurement of transformers, which you may be aware lasted for between two to three years, there was so much backlog. And at one time, we had so many transformers paid for by customers up to 951. And uh, we were not able to procure because uh, of those litigation issues. Transformers which were required for funded government uh, last mile schemes uh, of up to 561, which we were not able to procure. So we did create a backlog of up to 1,700 uh, transformers and creating a challenge on addressing some of these transformers. And that is why, uh, uh, Speaker, Honorable Members, we've had this transformer challenge that sometimes looks like, why don't we immediately bring in a replacement transformer uh, when there's been a breakdown? Um, so, but Chair, uh, Speaker, Honorable Members, we are on top of this, and um, we're trying to ensure that uh, the transformer challenge is addressed once for all uh, so that we don't have these inordinate delays in replacing uh, defective transformers. Um, I don't know whether the, 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 the next question on the inordinate delay in replacing defective power transformers in Kirogo, Maendeleo, Rishicheru village within Moya constituency, despite multiple requests for replacement, has been put to the floor. Uh, unless Senator Mbugwa is with such details, which I believe you can respond to in your next question, which is supplementary to the earlier question. Otherwise, I believe, Honorable CS, the response you've just given is specific to the first uh, question. And if there is any supplementary, I believe the Honorable Senator will be able to inquire so that you can respond to it as well. Proceed, Senator Mbugwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the supplementary question, I would like the Cabinet Secretary to ensure the country and this House that we have enough transformers in the country. And two, I would want the Cabinet Secretary to assure this House that the, he, to, to tell this House what measures is putting in place to ensure that the transformers which are coming in are not substandard. Thank you, Speaker. Honorable Sears. Um, uh, thank you again for that question. There is a current uh, procurement process going on for significant uh, number of transformers to address the shortfalls and to basically deal with the challenge that you raised in the first question and the second question. We've worked very closely and accompanying me to the House today is our Principal Secretary, Alex Washira, the CEO for Kenya Power, uh, Dr. Siror, Engineer Siror, and the CEO for Ketraco, uh, Dr. John Mativo, also Engineer John Mativo. And uh, I want to confirm, uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, that we really are looking at the quality of transformers. We're not only looking at that quality of transformers, we have made transformer requirements for procurement, uh, one that can be localized uh, to our market. And we've developed standards, work with the international community to ensure that we are able to uh, manufacture, uh, more assemble the transformers in Kenya. And in this um, procurement circle that I mentioned, we are getting adequate transformers to address the challenge of shortage. Uh, Chair, we have addressed those quality challenges so that we do not see the challenge of uh, transformers failing. Uh, one of the assurances, uh, honorable members of assuring 
ourselves on quality is to be able to be given warranty. Warranty is a statement of quality, which basically means, honorable members, if there's a breakdown, you basically replace a transformer at no cost. And we've taken all those precautions to ensure that we protect uh, our investments, we protect our customers, we protect ourselves from downtime, which causes more losses by ensuring that we do procure uh, quality transformers, but transformers which are backed by warranty, uh, which is, like I said, a statement of quality. Uh, and that is to basically say, in the event that we lose a transformer, before the warranty period lapses, we are able to get replacement at no additional cost. So, Chair, we are on top of that and uh, working together with my team. We will want to assure Kenyans uh, through this house that we will procure quality transformers and pitch for that warranty to confirm our quality and the failures that we've seen in the past. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you uh, very much, Honorable Sias. Uh, from my dashboard, honorable members, I have got a list of uh, eight members who I believe would want to ask supplementary questions to the CS. But when you look at the number of questions, the second question, question number 20, that is by Senator Tute, it is more or less related but nationwide covering. I therefore would direct that we allow the honorable Senator Tute to ask that question thereupon all supplementary questions by members can be asked for the CES to respond to all of them. Yeah. Honorable Senator Chute, proceed to ask question number 20. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, question number 020. Question number one. Which entities were responsible for the disruption, disruptions of power supply in most parts of the country on Saturday, 11th November 2023, and the nationwide power blackout that occurred on Friday, 25th August 2023? And could the Cabinet Secretary state any actions taken against those entities? Question number two. Would the Cabinet Secretary provide a comprehensive report on the losses incurred by businesses because of the power disruptions, while clarifying whether the affected businesses will be compensated? Question number three. What measures has the government put in place to ensure the stability of the national electricity grid to prevent the recurrence of such power disruption. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Senator Chuta. Honorable Sias, you may proceed to respond to the questions by Senator Chuta. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Chuta, for that question that uh, uh, touches on the outage that was experienced and the disruption of power supply in most part of the country on that Saturday, 11th November 2023, and the nationwide blackout that occurred on August, Friday, 2023, and the actions we've taken against uh, the agencies. The status of investigation into the nationwide power outage on those two dates, uh, honorable members, um, let me respond that at the time when we experienced that national outage, the system demand at the time of that occurrence was way below the peak demand. There was enough power on the grid uh, as we were only taking in 1,855 megawatts uh, within the generation mix of hydro, which at that time was delivering 355 megawatts. Geothermal at that time was delivering 817 megawatts. Uh, thermal uh, the, was delivering 244 megawatts, wind was at 356 megawatts, and the import from, uh, we didn't have any imports from Uganda, or we were feeding them some two megawatts, because we do a power exchange uh, with Uganda. And at this particular time, uh, we were pushing some two megawatts to Uganda. We were getting 
uh, 100 megawatts from Ethiopia uh, through the, uh, we call it EEP. The first event that related to the outage was recorded by our system at the National Control Center in Dandora, uh, the SCADA system, at 21 hours, 45 minutes, 0, 9 seconds, 187 milliseconds. Uh, I, I stress that, Chair, because we record events to the milliseconds or any occurrence because sometimes we want to see the sequence of events, what happened before which event. And that uh, outage was associated with dynamic, what we call dynamic reactive power compensation system at Lake Turkana, uh, wind power in Loyangalani. Uh, and the analysis of the event, honorable members, uh, revealed that the compensation unit was responding to a dip the system seemed to have seen a dip of voltage. Though the dip occurred at almost the same time with a sub-transmission uh, uh, line at Earth River, a 66 kV line at Earth River substation, uh, which was recorded at 21.4509.277. You will see that the dip, um, honorable members, occurred uh, about 100 milliseconds uh, later in our Earth River uh, substation. It is, however, unusual for such faults to affect the grid owing to the fact that the lines are the downstream, uh, the downstream uh, in terms of um, being the, la the last mile side of our consumption. And, and therefore, we do not expect uh, really uh, that unusual fault to affect the grid owing to the fact that the line are, like I said, at the downstream of the grid, and the resultant impact on the transmission grid should be minimal. Examination of the wave, the wave, the waveforms and the events in the SCADA system shows that Lecturcana wind pro power, uh, project or power project uh, uh, power plant uh, tripped in 140 milliseconds when the voltage dip was slightly above 80% 80, 80 of the normal 220 uh, voltage, uh, contrary to uh, conditions stipulated in the grid code, which require the system uh, to hold for at least two seconds uh, for a fault through, uh, for a fault right through. The fault can really be allowed to go through if the system was to hold for two seconds. But uh, this reactive power reacted and in less than 187 milliseconds, 140 milliseconds, um, the system shut down. So that really caused a challenge uh, which uh, cascaded down and uh, ran us into that challenge and that problem. On the 11th of November 23, Kenya Transmission National Grid uh, has installed interconnect generation capacity of, uh, with an installed capacity generation of 2806 megawatts, with your thermal at that time 852, hydros 810, uh, thermal 506, wind 426 megawatts, solar 212 megawatts. Uh, the national grid is interconnected with Uganda uh, through a 132 kV double circuit line between Lesos and Tororo substation and Ethiopia electric power through a 500 kV uh, high voltage uh, DC line uh, linked at Suswa, to linking Suswa. On that particular day, this is the second uh, uh, partial blackout on the 11th November 2023 at 19 hours 57 uh, minutes, the country experienced a partial uh, outage of the electric power system. The system demand before the outage again was approximately 22,057 megawatts distributed as shown on the table on the statement which I've signed and uh, given to the house. Hydros 553, geothermal 800 megawatts, thermal 234, wind 334, imports 136, totaling 2057 megawatts. You will not again Honorable members, that, that was way below 
the generation capacity of the country or the peak power that we have seen before. So it was nothing to do with the shortage of, of uh, power generation. The power supply disturbance was triggered by a trip on an 80 megawatt, uh, a 90 megawatt transformers at Olkaria 2 and Olkaria 1, Olkaria 1 additional unit substations. Olkaria Naivasha 132 line honorable members also tripped at the same time. The cost was attributed to a failed champa cable at Olkaria 1, 132 uh, kilovolts substation. The substation was commissioned in 1992 and reconstruction work in addition to upgrading of the generator uh, is due to commence uh, this year. The loss of the 170 megawatts and Naivasha 132 kilovolts line resulted in increased power flow from Olkaria uh, to Kibos 220 kV line and Suswa, Nairobi North 220 kV line. The shift in the power flows due to that caused an overload in one of the very weak links we have in the west of Kenya, Kisumu Moroni, which is the very reason why we are accelerating the construction of Narok Momet. So Kisumu Moroni 132 KV line and the two 200 megawatt transformers and that at Dandora 220 substation, Kisumu Moroni 132 line then tripped on an overload further, overloading the transformers at Dandora, which tripped. With a trip of these critical lines and cascade trip of Chuja, Naivasha, Kibos, Kisumu, uh, 132 to Moroni, the western part of the country was kind of isolated. It was islanded. And, uh, and, um, and uh, we then uh, saw that, that partial uh, challenge. Um, this led to several imbalances in the system. When this thing, the system tried to balance itself, and in a very short time, that imbalance uh, really, uh, in terms of the cascading of the uh, challenges, uh, caused that, that challenge of partial, partial outage. Uh, like I said, this led to several imbalances in the system, leading to cascade trip of generators in Olkaria, Nairobi, caused a loss of Ethiopia transmission and Uganda imports. And the loss of generation led to that partial collapse of the system. However, Mount Kenya grid system was uh, I landed with generators at Kamburu, the, the Cascade, uh, and Gitaru, running and tied to the customers connected to this part of the, of the grid. You will not remember that because it was a partial uh, outage, we were able to restore within three and a half hours. And so the restoration activities began at 2011 hours on the same day, and supply to the customers was finally restored uh, fully by 1.39 hours in the morning with sufficient generations av availed. Members, uh, honorable members, joint technical and operational teams in the energy sector have continuously reviewed such major disturbances with resultant improvements, recommendations, some of which have been implemented. These endeavors and efforts have continued to reduce the frequency and severity of system disturbance, especially those that would cascade and lead to nationwide grid collapse despite its vulnerability. System defense mechanisms such as effective under frequency load shedding uh, are some of the uh, strategies we have employed today and provision of emergency overload capacity for critical transmission lines have been employed and are working well. And what you will possibly notice for a while, we have not seen uh, some of these uh, systems. What I'm basically saying here, when there's an overload, we'd rather pull down some of the feeders or deload a network and not push power and overload the system. Uh, that would cascade and cause a nationwide, nationwide or the kind of partial uh, blackout that we talked about. So what we do, honorable, uh, speaker, and you'll possibly notice this more in the area of Bomet because of uh, Moroni Chemosit. When there is an overload in that line, because um, the li that line is built on a capacity of about 80 megawatts, 89 megawatts, and many times it would be carrying up to 120, 130 megawatts, Moroni Chemosit down to Sotik Gigathi, all the way to Awendo. Sometimes we have to deload the line by pulling some of the customers down. Uh, so that we don't overload the country. And so some of the 
uh, blackouts that you see sometimes is what we are calling here effective under frequency load shading to manage uh, the capacity of the system so that in a way we are islanding, we are isolating the problem to that small area by bringing it down and therefore sustaining the rest of the country. However, the proposed key projects are uh, uh, especially alternative transmission lines for evacuating power from key generation points which are bending poses major challenge in operating the network optimally. Uh, comprehensive, we have attached comprehensive list of uh, recommended critical creed enhancement project which are in various stages of implementation in the annex. Allow me, honorable members, at this point to point to the fact that whereas the energy sector in Kenya is almost fully unbundled to the extent that the generation, the transmission, and the off-taker operate independently uh, with their own balance sheet, with their own systems. Uh, Ketraco today is still supported on government balance sheet. And therefore, until, and we are working very quickly to employing the PPP framework to see how Ketraco, with the limited government resources, could be able to work through the PPP framework attract private investors to build transmission system, remove the constraints on the overloaded um, uh, circuits and be able to forestall this challenge. So a number of circuits today are undergoing evaluation through the PPP framework and so that uh, Ketraco can, be, can leverage on private investment and be able to uh, forestall some of these challenges. Some of the action the ministry is addressing the root cause of grid instability is formulating lasting solution in order to comprehensively address the weaknesses. One of them is what I just mentioned uh, through the PPP framework. Further, the government together with our development partners are working on grid reinforcement plan to ensure the frequent blackout experience lately do not become a persistent matter. Government is committed, honorable members, a speaker, uh, in having a reliable, sustainable, and resilient national grid uh, system and to an extent where, like I said, generation seems to be doing well. Uh, the off-taking through KPLC and what we are doing to strengthen their balance sheet, you've lately realized that we have allowed KPLC uh, minority shareholders to participate in the structure of governance, corporate governance, by bringing in four independent directors uh, to represent the interest of the 49.9% shares which are uh, out through the Nairobi Stock Exchange and the government side today is represented by five members. Th those are some of the reforms which we are working through in Kenya Power to address governance issues, address the power losses from the current 22 percent and we've given ourselves 16 percent in the next three years, address the issue of the balance sheet so that Kenya Power balance sheet can be strong enough to be able to go out there and do what they need to do for the country in assuring us of reliable, sustainable, resilient, uh, and the national uh, grid with respect to what I've said uh, in the PPP framework uh, so that we do not have to only come to the House or to Parliament to look for resources to build the infrastructure nationally. It can be built by the private sector and leverage on the electrons that flow on that network, the way we toll our road highways. We should be able to toll the lines and be able to uh, get return on investment uh, on the PPP framework. Speaker, honorable members, uh, thank you. Thank you, honorable Sias, for your very elaborate uh, response to the question by Senator Chute. Now, honorable members, I have got 11 requests on my dashboard. I believe these requests are with regard to supplementary questions. As I allow you, I would like to direct that we will limit uh, to, uh, now they are becoming 12, we will limit the amount of time each member will take to ask the question. And I would like to direct you to be guided by Standing Order 51C7 on supplementary questions. I will not hesitate to rule you out of order in the event of non-compliance with that uh, particular standing order. And for purposes of order, I will uh, limit each member to one question uh, within two minutes. 
start with the majority leader, Senator Aaron. Thank you, uh, Ms. Senator Chute, what's your point of order? I have, uh, Honorable Speaker, I have two supplementary questions. Very well. Yes. I'll allow you to go first because you asked the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I would want to take this opportunity to, first of all, thank the CS and the PS on behalf of the people of Marsabet. Honorable Speaker, uh, we visited uh, the CS's office some time back because of the problems we had of electricity in Marsabet. That problem has been solved through his efforts and the PS. I want to say thank you very much on behalf of our people. Honorable Speaker, uh, the question that I've asked is who foots the bill? Who is going to pay the cost, the business people incurred and the damages? That is my uh, question. And also, uh, the other question, Honorable Speaker, is Kenjin is going to come to Marsbit very soon. And they have already started the public participation process. And uh, the CS is aware that we had an issue with electrical wind power. And the issue is still before the court. Can the, PA, can the CS tell us what, what are we going to do, what is he going to do in regards to Kenjin going to Luangalani for a uh, supply of electricity? And finally, I want to ask the CS to tell us how far has he gone on the issue of uh, the line from Electrocano wind power going into Marsabit and Isiolo. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable CS, proceed to respond to that. Honorable CS, we are waiting on you to check uh, the microphone. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Speaker and Honorable. The supplementary question from Honorable Chute, and thank you for the compliments. We are at your service, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, if there are issues that we can deal on one by one, we'll be happy to do so, um, because we have one goal, to build this country together. Um, Marsa, but let me, let me answer the second question uh, on what we are doing uh, or what Kenjan is doing to better service the Luangalani. Distribution of power, we recognize that we need to service these residents of this area. And there is a project which uh, Honorable Chute may be aware about where we are connecting Loyongalani. We are building a high voltage line from Loyongalani to Marsabet and from Marsabet down to Siolo. Uh, when we came into office, uh, that project had been. Uh, processed uh, together with Kilgil, Mala, uh, Tika Mala, and a payment made uh, for the counterpart funding to support the, 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 foreign, the, foreign, the foreign side which was coming out of uh, China Exim. So a payment has been made. What we did immediately, because that payment was not enough, was to discop the two projects, the Loengalani, Marsabet, Isiolo, we discovered it from Gilgil, uh, Thika, Mala. Uh, and, and what that meant is we were able to then take 
Gilgil, Sikamala, onto a PPP framework, the PPP I talked about, and it's advancing well. The Loingalani Marsabet Isiolo then remained with the payment, which represents 15% of the payment, which is required as a counterpart funding, so that we can draw the XM funds to be able to build that line. We are further discoping that project to ensure that as we build this line, we are able to step down from 400 to 132 and 66 and be able to service that community. And as we go to Siolo, we should be able also to step down from the 400 KV uh, through that discoping and ensuring that uh, we service the people of Isiolo, uh, Marsabit as the line comes down. That is an, an advanced stage. The discoping work is going on through uh, China Exim. We, in principle, we are done on the Kenya part and the payment has been made. So we should be seeing as soon as we are done with our partners, uh, China Exim and the contractor, the line or the contractor going to site because uh, payment has already been made uh, on the counterpart uh, Kenya, Kenya portion. And so as soon as we finish with China Exim, we should see not only the big lines being built, but the step down from those high voltages to the voltage that feeds the communities coming out. And together with Last Mile for the first time, we should see uh, Loengalani on grid. We should see Marsabet on grid coming down all the way to Isiolo where we already have our the two line. Uh, so, uh, honorable members, we basically would be happy to really see that region on grid uh, on account of the fact that uh, Marsabet is very rich on wind resources, very rich on solar. And as we pull those resources to the significant industry or load centers, we will be servicing the communities, uh, cobbling with the last mile programs uh, where you fund us as parliament. Uh, regarding the first question on compensation, uh, when we have a major uh, blackout which impacts on the whole country, uh, the point would be to establish the cause and be able to really apportion the blame. Why you had me reading up to the second, the millisecond when the event occurred, is to find out whether did the in private investor power plant in Lecturkana go out first and cause the problem, or was the problem caused by the Juja 220, which came in 100 milliseconds later? So that work is going on, but again, honorable members, when we have a blackout, it is so significant in terms of losses for the country. And like I said, when we have a company like Kenya Power where we are trying to restructure its balance sheet to be able, you know Kenya Power pack stops all the IPPs in terms of uh, uh, the partial risk guarantees uh, that supports power generation for Kenya. And uh, unlike the banks, if one bank goes down, the other banks would be there. So we really need to take care of KPLC, even as we go today to the, from one market, uh, one market uh, a player to an open market where we will be allowing generators to generate power and wheel it uh, to market or to load centers using uh, the wheeling uh, policy, which is shortly being gazetted for purposes of allowing uh, multiple players in the industry. Because when I talked about a market which is unbundled. You should be able to generate your own power in a power plant and get Ketraco to wheel that power to market for you and sell that power to industry, wherever you want to sell in the country. And, and that then removes the Kenya power being required to reticulate or transmit and reticulate. So the unbundling is a significant aspect of what we've done in supporting uh, opening up the market so that we then move from a one market buyer where Kenya Power buys all the energy and distributes to an open market where anybody can generate, use Ketraco to wheel the power to market and sell that power to industry, wherever the industry is. Uh, a lot of work is still going on in this space of compensation and how much can we compensate when there is something like a national disaster or an, a major accident? Uh, but as regarding uh, challenges where uh, a cabling problem or a transformer caused a problem and Kenya Power is culpable, then that doesn't present a problem in compensation and we do that from time to time. But when we have a national 
a challenge like when uh, the whole network goes out because of something that is almost close to a national disaster. It becomes a challenge to say who should compensate because we would certainly be closing down a company that uh, we need to support the rest of the economy. Uh, we need to pay attention to that compensation space, but compensation do happen in, 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 in where the faults are very specific and pertaining to what could have been avoidable uh, to the extent that um, Kenya Power would then be able to compensate the affected uh, families or the affected businesses uh, to that extent. Uh, so we need to look at how do we then compensate when it is a national challenge, uh, which if costed, even the entire company could basically go under and, and therefore cause a problem for the entire country. Thank you, members. Thank you, Honorable Sias. Uh, I will now allow members to ask the supplementary questions, and I'll start with uh, Senator Mohamed Fakhi. Asante, uh, Mr. Speaker. Swali langu ni kuhusiana na kupotea kwa umeme katika county ya Mombasa, ususan wakati wa mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhani. Mr. Speaker, imekuwa sasa ni jambo la kawaida umeme kupotea mara kwa mara katika county ya Mombasa na maeneo ya karibu hususa na wakati huo ambao tunafanya tunafanya ibada za usiku wakati wa mwezi mtukufu Ramadhani wengi wanashindwa kuhudhuria ibada hizo kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa umeme na vile vile pia ni kiusalama si rahisi mtu kutoka nyumbani ikiwa hakuna mataya barabarani ambayo yamezimika kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa umeme Ye waziri ana mipango gani ya kuhakikisha kwamba kwa hizi siku 14 zilizobaki za mwezi mtukufu Ramadhani tutakuwa na umeme sio Mombasa peke yake Kenya nzima ili waislamu waweze kumuomba Mungu wao bila ya matatizo yote asante mheshimiwa speaker uh, honorable sias asante senator faki uh, Mombasa uh, county ni county moja ambayo umeme inayotumika hapo uh, utokana sana na generation wa uh, thermal that is where we have most of the thermal power plants the other generation ile tunaitumia sana Mombasa ni ile inatoka hapo Malindi uh, weru weru hapo nyuma kidogo we've got a, 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 a solar solar power plant uh, inamilikiwa na kampani moja inaitwa Cloblek uh, as an IPP and feeds 50 megawatts to the grid uh, pia Mombasa uh, ile moto mingi inapatikana Mombasa ni inatoka Olkaria pengine uh, the cascade ile line ya zamani ya Kamburu inayoenda Mombasa but majorly um, geothermal kutoka uh, Olkaria tushajenga hiyo line 400 kV lakini currently we are operating at 220 kV na hapo Mariakani kuna station kubwa tutafungua hivi karibu pengine wiki ama mwezi mmoja mbili hivi uh, one month uh, sio uh, july tutafungua hiyo station ya mariakani uh, the challenge in mombasa uh, honorable members is the fact that most generation is happening out of mombasa and we are transporting power to mombasa and the only heavy generation particularly coming out of malindi ni ile ya jua na unajua jua ikipotea kidogo uh, inaanguka Iki, ikirudi inaamuka but what we are doing to the challenges ya uh, challenges of uh, intermittence we are trying to stabilize that power ili kwamba uh, tuhakikishe kwamba Mombasa is well served Mombasa is well served Senator uh, Abdul Hadi what's your point of order Thank you Thank you bwana Asante sana bwana speaker Waziri kidogo ananichanganya anaongea Kiswahili mara anabadilisha wa kizungu so inakuwa ngumu kufuata maneno yake siachague moja akae kwa lugha moja kwa line moja tafadhali Asante speaker Honorable uh, uh, Haji is concerned. Nitachagua Kiswahili lakini wacha niseme kwanza kwa Kiingereza. 
So, uh, honorable members, like I said, the challenge in Mombasa is the fact that most of the generation up happens out of the region. We transport the power to Mombasa. What happens in Malindi or the generation out of Weru in Malindi, the solar power plant, you know most of the renewable plants like wind and solar uh, are associated with intermittents. Intermittents uh, is to say when there is wind, and wind is very good at night, you do very good generation. And when there is no wind, you have to have a replacement to take over and supply the energy, uh, similar to solar. And whereas we support Mombasa majorly with diesel generation, we have built a line, 400 kV line, uh, between uh, Olkaria through to Isinya, Isinya, Mariakani, and that will service Mombasa adequately with almost 100% uh, renewable energy. Mariakani is being commissioned in July. And um, because I'm here with my team, Honorable Faki, or Honorable Members, uh, we've had the challenge during the month of Ramadan we'll possibly want to do more of what we are doing in Narok Bomet to ensure that uh, there is no overload or constraint in the transmission systems, uh, which occasionally there is, because we are also building a line between Malindi, uh, Malindi, uh, Weru, Kilifi. The funding is available together with the Narok Bomet from um, from Korea, South Korea, and Africa Development Bank. In fact, we have already gone to tender on the one for Narok Bomet. With that funding, there is so much happening in Mombasa. We recognize Mombasa as an important city, not only uh, during such holy months of Ramadan, but as the gateway, uh, water gateway, not only to Kenya, but to the East Africa region. From the earlier meeting where we uh, today uh, gave the National Treasury a check of five billion on, uh, on account of the profits made by Kenya uh, Pipeline, we were talking to how do we service the region better using our gateway and play that competitive advantage so that that advantage does not go to our neighbors down Dar es Salaam and so on and so forth. So, Honorable Faki, uh, we are paying a lot of attention to Mombasa, the kind of investment coming to the region in transmission, uh, power generation, looking at um, uh, Dongokundu, where we are going to take a T-line, which is there's already funding from JICA to, to, to Dongokundu, and the kind of infrastructural support, not just because of Mombasa, but to make Mombasa service the all of East Coast of Africa uh, is going to be significant. And so we just beg for your support uh, as we walk the journey together to address these challenges which may not be quite finished win during the month of Ramadan, but I want to really beg on my colleagues to ensure that uh, what we talk about in, in terms of managing the grid so that we don't have those uh, small outages given the kind of temperatures and the lifestyle where every household needs air conditioning uh, and the discomfort during the month of Ramadan is addressed. Uh, thank you. Senator Abbas Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I wish to ask the, the CS. First and foremost, I want to thank the CS for the first time what year is actually, for the time month of Ramadan is getting uh, power supply. Thank you for that. Uh, having said that, uh, Honorable uh, uh, CS, uh, the municipality of Wajia Township actually is expanding and the machines are getting very old and it's emitting a lot of uh, heavy, heavy uh, emissions and fumes of, uh, and this, uh, that is causing a lot of pollution. So I don't know what measures can be put in place because that, now, that machine now, uh, the, the, the station now is actually emerged, I mean, surrounded by uh, settlements and the pollution is just too high. I want you to at least do something if it can be done. Two honorable speaker, uh, Senator um, CS. There was a plan for five megawatts solar for Wajia. I don't know where that plan has gone. We are looking, anxiously waiting for it. I want to know the situation. 
And what plan do you have for Wajia? Now that I can hear my colleague here, he's almost getting benefited from, uh, from the wind power. So I think uh, you should also divert this uh, wind, mill, uh, wind power to Wajia because it's actually even shorter than taking it back to uh, like Suswa and all this and Amor Navasha. So what is the plan for Wajia actually? So for, to have, uh, to be at the part of the national grid. Otherwise, as it is, the, 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 the county is growing. Uh, we are the, uh, already experiencing, you know, uh, upcoming of uh, cottages. Abbas, you've asked your question. Honorable Sias, uh, if you could respond. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Abbas uh, and uh, honorable members. As regarding plans we have for Wajia being majorly supported through the COSAP or Kenya off-grid uh, solar system. We've got funding from, uh, there is a retiring uh, OECD funding from Poland, which we are pitching for. We've signed an, 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 an MOU for that fund of 200 million US dollars to come to Kenya uh, to support in the development of areas like uh, Wajia. And uh, I think we will be we are ready as Kenya, and we've submitted that document to the other side. I think we should be signing before end of April uh, to, to draw that funding. A lot of that funding will support uh, the off-grid systems, but more importantly, uh, members, uh, we are looking at how to connect Garissa on grid to Ajia. How to, there's, there's also uh, a program of hybridization where Wajia is currently served fully uh, or 100% uh, by thermal generation, a uh, diesel generator. What we are doing is putting in a solar plant which can run during the day, and if there was intermittence, then the, the batteries will be there to support, and uh, the diesel engine can only come on if the solar is challenged. Uh, when the batteries are, are not running enough. We did a similar project uh, in, we are doing similar projects in seven counties, one which we have commissioned and the president participated in the commissioning is Wasini, Wasini in Lungalunga, where we have the solar plant and if the solar is not there, the batteries can run for three days and if the solar, the batteries went down, only then the diesel engine comes on. So those kind of solution we are evaluating, even for counties like uh, Turkana, how we can move, whether we should move on grid to Turkana from, um, from Lokscha to Turkana, or do we do an off-grid, which is fairly solid, and where a solar plant or a wind plant can run, and if, because of intermittence, the battery system can support for three days, and. Uh, otherwise, a diesel generator can come. This is in line with the Kenya commitment to 2030, 100% green energy. And therefore, when we talk at 2024 today to 2030, that we need to switch off all those diesel engines. We should be seeing some of the pronouncements I'm making, uh, honorable members, coming into fruition in 26, 27, 28. So we'll continue to work together, but this hybrid system, solar system, that uh, should really run all the time, supported by batteries, and we only fall back to diesel, will actually remove some of those intermittents that we even see today. Uh, because with battery uh, being a good uh, form of storage of power, we should be able to... But again, uh, Honorable Chute, Honorable Apas, the way you have been to my office a few times, we can look at the details of these programs for those off-grid areas and what we are doing together uh, to support our country. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sias. Uh, Senator Ogola Beatrice. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, my question is on a statement that I made last year in May uh, to the um, uh, ministry, but uh, relevant to the question today on faulty transformers. In my question, Honorable Speaker, I'd ask that the ministry list a number of uh, faulty transformers in Homer Bay County 
and provide timelines within which the transformers would be replaced. And precisely, honorable speaker, uh, the response came in time, uh, the same month from the ministry, which I appreciate so much. And in the response, honorable speaker, the CS had given uh, a list of transformers, uh, 83 in 84 in number that were uh, faulty, and went ahead to give two lists. One list has 21 transformers that would be replaced by RERC by the 31st of July 2023, and another list was given of 63 faulty transformers that would be replaced by KPLC by the 31st of July 2023. Now my question to the CS is, is the CS aware that the commitment that was made by the ministry uh, to my response has not been re uh, honored, and I would like to know why and when that would be honored. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable CS, could you respond to the question? Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you, Beatrice, for that. Uh, let me, let me, let me uh, allow me, Chair, because this is a, a very detailed uh, a question with 21 transformer 63 with KPLC and uh, KPLC is here with me through the CEO uh, Dr. Siror. Um, I think the challenge in Homer Bay, sometimes when we say the challenge in Bomet is the transit to Homer Bay because most of the power that comes to that region uh, comes through Bomet, uh, Kisi, through Kigati, uh, Homer Bay, Awendo. And, and uh, it's not only a transformer challenge that we are facing in that region. It, it is compounded by the constraint, transmission constraint. Uh, and therefore, with the power outage, the transformer challenge, the load shedding that I talked about earlier on, uh, impacts in that area heavily. So, Chair, I want to beg to be allowed with the KPLC CEO who is sitting here. Rerek gave an apology. The lady, Dr. Rose Mukalama, the CEO for Rerek, was supposed to be here with us, but she's attending to something outside Nairobi today, uh, to address this 21 and 63. And like I said, we are in a procurement circle of so many transformers. If KPLC was to stand and respond on my behalf, they, they will say as soon as these transformers are delivered, we'll address a number of transformers, not only in Homer Bay, but in the country in terms of replacement. But we also have really need some public awareness and support in terms of the abuse that goes to the transformers. We can bring in a new transformer today, but as we take part of the rural areas, and because we have our TTIs and we have trained our people, they have learned to sometimes uh, illegally do illegal connections, which are not dimensioned, and they overdraw power from the transformer. You can burn the coil and therefore lose a transformer. A transformer today runs for anything up to a million shillings, two million shillings, depending on the, on the kilowatt uh, rating of that transformer. So the important thing is to ensure that also that Customers connected to the transformer are legitimately connected and they are paying their bills so that they don't take shortcuts and burn a transformer that we could blame on quality of the transformer and yet it is our culture of wanting to use free power uh, for that purpose. Uh, but allow, 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 allow us, uh, Speaker Beatrice, to uh, respond substantively, possibly because of specific question impacting on Homer Bay, to deal with you directly to address what we promised. And like I said, there's a transformer procurement circle which is uh, just closed. How much can KPLC pick up and correct? I'm sure of the 63, some have been addressed. But any that has not been addressed, not only for Omar Bay, but for the whole country, we allow us to address that, but to respond more specifically to the question of the 21 transformers and uh, Eric and 63 for KPLC. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sias. Uh, Senator uh, Abdul Hadi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me first take this opportunity to thank the Minister for appearing today and answering the questions of the members, which um, in reality are questions from the public. 
Mr. Speaker, sir, I would ideally be asking the Minister uh, in relation to the frequent power outage um, in Garissa, but I will not ask him that question because um, it's already been asked by the uh, Senator from Mombasa and Wajir, and it's been addressed. So I would not want him to, to repeat. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, my question I want, uh, was touching on the issue of transformers. Um, the Waziria has explained to us here that they're expecting, uh, they've made some procurement, um, and uh, for a long period of time in Kenya, we've, we've, we've been told that the problem with uh, Kenya Power and Lighting is usually transformers. So my question, Bwana Waziri, um, I just want to inquire on whether or not if we have any local manufacturers uh, for transformers in Kenya, and if we have local manufacturers, is the Ministry and Kenya Power and Lighting procuring from the local manufacturers? If we don't have any local manufacturers for transformers, what is the Ministry doing to talk to local investors, to give them incentives to set up manufacturing plants for transformers um, so that we can stop relying on uh, brokers and agents or foreign um, uh, transformer manufacturers who bring us substandard products from time to time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you, Senator uh, Haji. Honorable Sias respond, and particularly in line with the second limp of the question, because you've responded to the aspect on the transformers and uh, the power outages. Uh, thank you again, Speaker. Thank you, uh, Senator Haji. And uh, we'll do our best during this holy month of Ramadan to sustain uh, those areas uh, because of uh, the kind of lifestyle during the month of Ramadan to make sure that people are comfortable, the, the air conditioning in our homes are, are working, and so on and so forth. And like I said, again, I'm here with the uh, CEO for Kenya Power. Uh, we are listening, and we will act on that. Uh, we have got local transformer manufacturers, and I think today, honorable members, the requirements for importing transformers uh, into the country are so difficult uh, against local manufacturers. In fact, all local, all transformers come out of local manufacturing. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how much local it is in terms of assembly and manufacturing because you know transformer would be a coiling we may not manufacture copper so uh, the question of how much is uh, raw materials manufactured and how much is assembly but the point today is all transformers that come into the kenyan market are locally manufactured particularly uh, up to a certain kilowatt rating the big ones that we may not have capacity come from outside, um, and we are building capacity for the local industry to be able to do that. Uh, we've got a very stringent inspection and certification process, and Kenya Power do work with the local manufactured transformer companies uh, to ensure that uh, we support them in this endeavor, and therefore localize, create jobs for our industry, but the point, Mwishimiwa, is it would be difficult of 100 new transformers coming into the Kenya market, you may not get five imported transformers. It is basically locally manufactured. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Sias. Senator Aaron Turiat. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first I want to congratulate the minister and his team for a job well done in uh, first responding to questions that have been raised by members and also the leadership that they are providing to the ministry, listening to the answers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if the minister can commit and assure us that the plans as he has laid out this afternoon before the house will be delivered, then uh, we're in a good place and I want to appreciate what they are doing as a team at the ministry. I have one question, Mr. Speaker. When, uh, when the minister was responding, Speaker, he mentioned the desire by GOK 
to move to 100% green energy by 2030 and the plans uh, that that entails. I am aware, Mr. Speaker, because previously in my life in this House, I served as a member of the Energy Committee, uh, Mr. Speaker, that there are many uh, people that you can call tenderpreneurs, for lack of a better word, who are still holding around, either in Kenya or in the uh, famous capitals of the world, uh, exploration licenses for geothermal, which can help us as a country uh, to access those sites, uh, Mr. Speaker, and be able to bring on show uh, cheap and affordable power as opposed to the old, uh, old uh, generated power, some of which he has mentioned, like the diesel power. When is his ministry going to take decisions against such uh, business people so that we, um, we are able to enjoy cheaper power? Because that was a key promise that this administration made to the people of Kenya, yet that is yet to be fulfilled, uh, Mr. Speaker. Finally, Speaker, and this is of interest to you, so even if you want to throw me out, uh, it is your people of Bomet who will uh, benefit just like my people, and that's not a bribe to you. Can the minister confirm to the House when will they uh, commence the construction of this uh, narrow Bomet line that will affect all of us that are in the western part of the country to stop this uh, quasi lead shedding, shedding that we continue to see each and every other day? The president made a pronouncement recently in his tour of Bomet, but we want to know when will works commence. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Sears, respond to the two questions. Ordinarily, uh, you ought to have asked one supplementary question, but I exercise the discretion and understanding order number one. So, Honorable Sears, proceed to respond to the two questions by the majority leader. Uh, thank you, uh, Senate Majority Leader, for uh, raising what is very important for this country and for the world at large to pitch our country as a renewable, a green, renewable energy uh, country. There will be, shortly be premium on green, uh, green steel, green, uh, green everything in terms of manufacturing because uh, it supports and addresses the challenges which mitigation on climate change would otherwise be so expensive. Like what we've seen in the very regular rain, rainfall patterns, <clears throat> the temperatures that we, we feel today, when it should be sometimes the coldest time of the year, it's very warm and uh, causing really difficult patterns on even how we do our farming. Uh, that commitment of 100% renewable by 2030 is a commitment that has been made at all levels. And uh, Speaker, Honorable Members, as you are aware, we are today 93% in terms of energy mix, renewable. And the 7% is basically the power that we get out of, out of uh, heavy fuel for picking. We don't have a coal plant. We don't have, a, uh, we don't have any, any fossil fuel except for, in, for picking in the evening when there is a certain surge of power demand, when industry is working and we light our homes in the evening. And that is only for four hours. But the rest of the hours in the, in the day, we run uh, renewable, except for what I said, we need to expire some of the uh, diesel generations in the coast region. But like I said, like has been mentioned uh, by uh, Senator Chiriot, the expiring PPAs on the diesel generators are not being renewed. I think we made that commitment, and for every expiry of a PPA and they are all coming to an end, uh, we are coming in with renewable energy. Uh, we've just been pushing to commission uh, some 70 megawatts out of Meningai, sometimes next year, another 58 megawatts out of Wellhead uh, generation from Olkaria. And therefore, our walk towards achieving 100%, uh, albeit with the challenges, we're going Senator to walk that journey. Senator Kay and Senator Faki. Senator Kamau, if you must consult, please consult in law tones for the CS to be heard in silence. Honorable members, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, plan does recognize in one powerful statement that we are going to accelerate the geothermal development in Kenya, which is one of our very, very good base loads. And what we are doing to that end, today we have very 
uh, significant programs in Suswa to open up Suswa and generate geothermal power out of Suswa. We have about 80 megawatts out of PACA. PACA, honorable members, in, is in Tiati, and we are going to accelerate building a line from Lesok to Lesos to pull out that power and generate out of that area. We are working at PACA to open up that area. We've drilled the first well. It is heating up. So there's so much activity in the geothermal development to basically support us because geothermal is a very good base load in terms of generating all the time and availability. We gave concessions, like uh, a majority leader did mention, to some of the private developers. And con concession comes with work programs. We are reviewing those work programs which have been attached to the concessions which are, were given to those private sector players. And if they are not meeting the work programs as signed in the concession, we should be able to have those uh, fields, those geothermal fields, revert back to government. But we are working very closely to ensure that uh, we do achieve that target of 100% renewable. As regarding Narok Bomet, I just uh, whispered and confirmed from Dr. Mativo, the CEO for Ketraco, that we have already gone to tender. You may not have seen in the papers, but uh, a limited, uh, what do you call, a number of vendors or uh, restricted tenders of six companies were approved, were given a, a advance approval by Africa Development Bank, and the six bidders are currently responding to those bids. Uh, it's closing in another two, three weeks. We will award, and instead of building that line in the traditional 24 months, we're going to build it in 12 months. I'm told we have a commitment to deliver that line by 1st of June, uh, 2025. So we are working around the clock to make sure that happens. In the meantime, to address that challenge, uh, honorable members, we, there was a contractor who went uh, uh, bust, who was doing a line from Sondu, Homer Bay, Awendo. We have brought in another contractor who is on site today to basically take power to Awendo through Homer Bay and the load the Chemosid route. We are also, like I said, addressing the load shedding through managing the overloads to ensure that uh, we don't have that challenge. Uh, Siror, Dr. Siror, are doing a bay out of Lesos to take power straight to Moroni so that we don't go through Kibos in, in Kisumu to again deload Kisumu Moroni. So there's a lot that we are doing to reduce the challenge uh, in Bomet, Kericho, Kisi, Awendo, uh, so that we don't see the kind of load shedding. Load shedding is not a solution. Uh, we need to deload those lines and be able to remove those constraints and ensure our industries, our hospitals, and our homes are lit. So, honorable members, there's a commitment from the CEO who is sitting here with me, Dr. Mativo, that will deliver the line by 1st of June, 2025. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, my question to the CS is that there has been a power outage in Lamu for the last 10 months, Mr. Speaker. This is due to the pylon which was attacked, and it is causing a lot of economic uh, losses. Our health facilities are affected, our dialysis machines are damaged, and many other machines. Our fishing industry is very much affected, and our security also is also affected. Mr. Speaker, the minister can tell us when will this pylon be repaired? It has taken 10 months. When will it be repaired? Because we have been suffering, we have written to the directors, we have done a lot, but nothing has been done so far. So maybe today the Waziri can give us the answer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You may uh, respond to the question. And as you prepare to respond to that, maybe I could allow Senator Omakinga to uh, ask a supplementary question so that both of them can be answered together. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me this, um, the, this opportunity. 
let me also kick it off by thanking the, the, the CS for ably leading and uh, taking leadership in making very hard decisions, especially to bring innovative solutions to the uh, power problem that has been a challenge uh, in Kenya. Mr. Speaker, having noted that, yesterday I was with the, the head of the, the state, the, the, his president, and we, his excellence, the president, and we noted that the polytechnic students are very good, especially in the modern technology. One of the students also did a very nice presentation of um, 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 vandalism protective mechanism, digital one, for the, um, for the transformers. But having said that, I would want to know from the CS, now that we are moving into more demand of electricity, and we know that we have to move to smart meters, is there any intention from the government to ensure that we get local partners, especially learning institutions of higher learning, to train um, assemblers, manufacturers of these small components that can be made in Kenya so that we save on foreign exchange, and most importantly, also transfer the technology, and also ensure that they, are, they can be uh, lately available. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, sir, let me commend the fact that um, uh, the you know, renewable energy in Kenya is very, very important. But as uh, the majority leader has asked, uh, is the, the CS is aware that there are people who are supposed to be joining GRID in 2026 and they have not done anything, and therefore we run a risk of having demand but not a source? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable CS, you now could respond to the two questions, one earlier on by Senator Shakila and uh, the one by the Chairperson of Energy Committee, Senator Omatinga. Um, let, let me take the challenge from the Senator from Lamu, which really was, a, was caused by some double tragedy. Uh, the El Nino, which caused flooding and brought down some of our poles, but uh, more importantly, and not very loudly, uh, when three of our towers were brought down, uh, and you know those towers that were hit. And um, we luckily, we did have some 33 kV line which provided uh, some little relief. But the major 132 line that was hit, uh, and where the DOD has cleared the site, uh, we have now procured a contractor. In the next one week, the contractor will be on site to erect those three towers that were brought down, and we should be able to restore normalcy in Lamu. Uh, and with respect to the, to the flooding, that has not been a major one. I think uh, we are quite advanced, and uh, Senator Fausia, we should... Shakila, I know, I know Shakila very well. She's, uh, we've come a long way. So we will be able to address that. We'll be able to address that um, in a short while. In another one week, uh, since the site has been cleared, um, we'll be able to, to bring those three towers up and restore normalcy in Lamu. Uh, thank you, Senator Omatinga. Uh, with respect to uh, what we've done as a government in bringing up our tivets, addressing uh, the challenge of our youths to be able to employ our youths from our polytechnics. Um, this is a question which goes along with the transformer. If we are assembling transformers or manufacturing transformers, I want to assure you also that the few meters that still come to Kenya uh, and assemble or not being reworked in Kenya are not because we don't have a policy. The policy today, if you go to a number of uh, warehouses in industrial area, they are not warehouses. We are having semi-knockdown kits. We are assembling, we are testing our meters, our digital meters um, in industrial area. And uh, CEO of Kenya Power can confirm that. Rere can confirm that. And as we roll out our a capacity and students from the Polytechnic, the Tivet, I can assure this house that there will really be opportunities in these areas of technology to even go into manufacturing the more detailed components as opposed to just assembling. So, honorable members, we are already on it. There is a policy framework in Kenya Power that meters ought to be local. Uh, transformers should be local. And when you, there is no room almost for competition against a local manufacturer uh, today. So we are working on that. I want to confirm that 
uh, it would be an exercise in futility if our tivets are churning out our youth and we are importing some of these things that can be locally manufactured, locally assembled in our country. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Waziri. Uh, Jackson Mandago. The IPPs, let me touch on the IPPs which are on the list of power development for delivery of uh, power in 2026. Um, Senator Omatangi chairs the Energy Committee. We'll possibly invite you in the next one, two weeks uh, in a session that we are planning to sit down with all the IPPs to confirm whether they, are, they can sign on the uh, cost of delivery, uh, unit cost of per kilowatt that is acceptable to us. Uh, the delivery, the COD, what we call the, uh, the, the date of uh, commissioning or uh, uh, commercial operation date uh, of 2026 because what the way we run the LCPD, Least Cost Power Development Plan members, is we match demand with supply. We don't generate what we don't need. And then therefore, it's a chicken and the egg question. Do you develop power when there's no demand or do you generate demand and then you develop power? In which case, the industry may not be willing to wait for you to spend three years to, to build a power plant if they are ready to invest. So it sometimes can be an impediment to developing industry. So what we'll be doing, uh, my chair, in a short while is calling all the IPPs who have been scheduled to deliver in 2024, 25, 26, and 27. That is the tariff period that has been provided by EPRA in the current tariffs that are levied by Kenya Power to confirm that they will all fulfill their CODs. And if they can't meet their CODs, there are other generators outside uh, 26 or 27 who are willing to come in and be able to support us to ensure that the demand is not suppressed because we are not able to supply the energy or the power in good time. Uh, thank you. Thank you, honorable members. Thank you, Azira. Senator Mandago. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Honourable Speaker, Honourable Speaker, allow me to take the CS back on the, on the matter of blackout. What was the reason that there was blackout in the better part of Monday in Nairobi, to the extent to the operations of Nairobi Funeral Home and Bagadi Hospital, uh, Honourable Speaker, didn't have power? And what are the plans, Honourable CS, to ensure that level four and level five facilities health facilities that the government intends to place equipment to support the rollout of BC in ensuring that they have three phase power. A case example is West Pocot level five hospital that doesn't have three phase and they have equipment that have been in store for the last seven years without being utilized because of lack of power. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um. Today is Wednesday. I think Monday is the day when some of us did not get home because everywhere was flooded uh, because of the heavy rains. And uh, we had uh, a circuit breaker going off in our Nairobi West uh, 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 substation, which was restored very quickly and uh, power resumed. Uh, when, when there were the kind of flood, uh, floodings uh, which even blocked uh, expressway honorable members uh, it, it is something that but again uh, like I've said before we are paying attention to ensure that we reduce or we eradicate the blackouts completely which are caused by uh, events which are avoidable and then we are going to pay attention to that as regarding um, our public institution which are not on power or not on three phase uh, we've made a commitment that there's absolutely no reason why we are 75 percent, 77 percent access on power. That basically means power is within reach. And yet public institutions, schools, high schools, primary schools, uh, dispensaries and hospitals are not on power. So what we've done in the budget that we currently are rolling out and working with members of parliament, and a number of you have come with the members of parliament for your areas to my office uh, as a county group, is to prioritize all the public institutions 
and ensure that they are on power. Uh, where there is need for three phase, there is got to be we and and it, and three phase within access. Uh, in terms of the grid, we need to provide that power, and we have that commitment. There is absolutely, you know, primary schools are centre of habitation. Schools are not in isolated areas, and therefore, when we provide a transformer to serve a school, the communities around the schools through maximisation are serviced, and if we do the adjacent school. The pockets uh, that are out of 600 meters because of the of the resistance of the lines and the fact that uh, we don't want to have too much power losses because of very long cables can then be patched with transformers and provide 100% uh, connectivity uh, to the country. Uh, we are working hard to see whether through the funding uh, coming through Parliament the support coming through Parliament, the support coming through our development partners, we can accelerate connectivity in Kenya and come close to 100% uh, by the year 2030, the same year we are saying we need to be 100% renewable. So some of those programs where uh, you are pushing the CS to do, you will come to my office today and find that the programs you decide to be done are already on our programs because that is the job you have given us to do. Uh, so we are working... Uh, Honorable Senator Mandago to ensure that all public institutions, not just that one hospital in West Pokot, are on power. Because medicine like insulin in an hospital, how do you, how do you preserve medicines in an hospital if there is no power? So as a priority, before we go to our villages, there is no reason why public, any public institution today uh, in Kenya is not on power to be able to support the livelihoods of the people around that region. So we have that commitment and we are working on that. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Members. Thank you, Waziri. Uh, Senator Oginga Oburu. Thank you. Uh, uh, th thank you, Waziri, uh, for energy. Now, I just want to ask one question concerning my county, Siaya. Uh, Mr. Buena Minister, we have a plant, a rice plant, uh, between Busia and Siaya, but the plant is within Siaya County. This uh, plant is a new plant. It has been constructed and completed, and the farmers have a lot of rice, which have just been harvested. Uh, the paddy is dried, is dry, and it is thousands and thousands of bags. I went there, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I witnessed uh, the way the desperation of the farmers, because they don't have, uh, the, the mill cannot be opened and yet it is complete, and the farmers now risk either losing that crop or taking it to Uganda for milling, which is very expensive. And the reason why the plant cannot be commissioned is because of three phase. The, the power is already there, but it needs to be upgraded to three phase. And uh, I'm pleading with the minister to take immediate uh, me some action to make sure that this plant, at least they upgrade it from phase one to phase three, so that the farmers can benefit. Mr. Speaker, the, there is also the industrial park within the same area in Siaya. Uh, just uh, adjacent to Sierra Town, which was uh, opened by, commissioned by uh, CS uh, Curia, Curia uh, some few months ago. Uh, it is also completely dysfunctional because of upgrading the power from phase one to phase three. So these are the two big projects in Sierra, and the only ones, Mr. Speaker, I hope that the minister is going to take note and take some action to ensure that this project start uh, functioning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. thank you, Senator. Waziri, we are going to take two more questions because of time, and then maybe you can answer all the three um, and we we'll see if we can cover more ground. Uh, Senator Samson Cheragay, and then followed by Senator Nderitu uh, John Kinyo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, and uh, I want to thank uh, Cabinet Secretary for Energy, uh, 
Mshumua Chirichir for always working in silence and doing wonders. He's one of the CSS that normally works in silence, but is very effective and efficient. Mr. Speaker, mine are just brief question. Waziri, could it be the reason of faulty transformers that is causing regular power outage? Mark you, I was in, uh, over the weekend, I was in Kapcherop Township, uh, Waziri, and uh, in that township, they, they can lose up to two days without electricity. And tying up, uh, when you go to a place called Kabwareng and uh, Terik Ward, some of your officers from Kenya Power and Lighting, uh, they go ahead and uh, if they get, and you remember the president had given direction that if they get any Kenyan who was regularly or irregularly, let me not say illegally, uh, were connected to power, it was supposed to be regularized. But when you go to Nandi County, some of your officers go ahead, especially in Aldai, to just go and remove, even including the, the post of the Kenya Power and Lighting, and also removing meters instead of regularizing. What are you doing to arrest a such situation? And Wazir, we wish you well as you continue doing wonders in the Ministry of Energy. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. From once, uh, from once I want to thank the Cabinet Secretary and the Permanent Secretary for a good job they are doing. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am aware that transformers are of different capacities. And knowing that uh, the CS is an expert in the areas of technology, I just wanted to know in his office whether he has a dashboard and he can tell uh, how many transformers we have in Laikipia, their capacity, and how many people are supplied by those transformers. I'm saying that because you go to some areas, uh, Mr. Speaker, you find they are transformers, but they are only supplying two people. You go to other areas, you find a transformer that is even overloaded. So I wanted to know whether the minister, and I know he's an expert in the area of technology, whether from his office he can tell how many transformers we have in Laikipia and how many people are, tra are supplied by each, transform and each transformer. So in totality, he can tell how many people are supplied in Laikipia and how many transformers we would want so that we can have 100% coverage of people of Laikipia by power. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, CS, you can answer. And please keep the uh, answers uh, short so that we can take a few more questions before yeah, 1 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, members. Honorable Oburu, the, the answer is yes. We're going to pay attention to this rice uh, scheme um, in your county towards Busia. Uh, food security is paramount. I think uh, that is the very reason why when the... Uh, fiscal, what do you call the the the, 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 the the country was facing the dollar liquidity challenge because of the tightened monetary policy, uh, Fed running the U.S. interest investment in the U.S. at almost 5.5 percent. We didn't have dollars and it is unfair, unfortunate that we have to use our dollars to import food, uh, things we can easily grow. So uh, I've just consulted with Kenya Power Lighting, the designing the design for, for, for the scheme to support that rice, uh, rice scheme is finished. It's more of upgrading to three phase. The same question goes to the industrial park. Uh, the CEO is here with me. We're going to follow up and make sure that, uh, because we are not building a new network, uh, even if the harvest is now, we can be able to support the people in that rice scheme within the season because Upgrading is not a matter of uh, months. It can be done in a few days. So we look at the funding aspect to be able to do that upgrade. The only challenge that we face is, um, honorable member, sometimes we handle KPLC as a social company. You know, we've got 49%, 49.9% investment for, uh, listed in the, in the stock market, in Nairobi Securities Exchange. And therefore, when Kenya Power goes to the ground and give uh, a, an invoice or a bill for a transformer. We should, if we are able to support them to, on, with payments, they should be able to connect immediately. But in terms of extending the network to the area, that is our responsibility because it's commercial. They'll get revenue by pulling the uh, network to where the business is so that they can sell more power. So 
Mwishimi Oburu will follow up that. I'm here with Dr. Siror and possibly even uh, give you an individual call to make sure that that has been done. Senator Cherargei, uh, really this transformer challenge is a big challenge for us and we need a lot of support. Uh, during the days when there were no meters and uh, schemes have been built by REREC and there's been no meter, there was no meter because of the challenge of the legal issues of meter procurements which we f the country faced sometimes. Uh, clients sometimes learn to, or they were connected irregularly to, the, to, to, to consume power without a meter. Uh, I'm sure you are aware that uh, sometimes we've tried to connect meters and our officers have not been allowed to go in to connect meters because if you can consume it for free, why do you want to allow somebody to come and put in a meter? And so sometimes it forces us to disconnect uh, power at the transformer to allow, to, to, to encourage them to allow us to go in and address uh, because otherwise we close down Kenya Power if they have to pay the generators uh, and yet they have not collected the revenue. So that's one challenge we've had. Uh, it is more prevalent in some, uh, in some counties. I don't want to name which ones. Uh, we even have a situation where illegal networks have been built um, with, and they pose risk. Uh, poles which, sometimes poles which you find have fallen out in a particular area are not, it's not a network of Kenya power. And that's why you see us coming and cutting down a pole. Uh, you'd ask yourself, is Kenya power out of their mind to be pulling down a pole? Uh, some of those poles are not our poles. And we basically, it portends security challenge to the people when people have gone out of the way completely and even put in a small network connected to a transformer which is being overloaded because it's an irregular network. It's an Ill illegitimate legal network and therefore uh, overloaded transformer, cause a problem to the legitimate customers who are properly connected, and therefore we really want to appeal for the political leadership to work with us in supporting Kenya Power to also get revenue so that we can extend uh, the network to some of the areas like the rice field that uh, Honorable Oburu has talked to. The dashboard, uh, so, but again, we'll follow up uh, on Aribo Chararge. We have had Cap Cherop, uh, Cap Wareng, and Terik. We will follow up and pay attention to those areas you mentioned. And if there are others that you want us to follow up on, we will we'll, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, with respect to Mwishimiwa Kenya, Senator, we have a dashboard. But you can imagine if it was in the Cabinet Secretary's office, the dashboard for Kenya Power, the dashboard for Gen the dashboard. We have serious dashboards. I would, I would like uh, to encourage uh, Honorable Matangi to invite some of the Honorable Members to come to our National Control Center. We have a dashboard and we see the whole country in one room. In one room. And, and so we follow up what's happening all the time. And when we see a bit of an overload, we are able to pull down to ensure that the network doesn't go down because of an overload. Uh, uh, what, what we call uh, managing that reactive uh, uh, situation where there's an overload. And then therefore, with respect to, then why do we have transformers which, which are connecting one person? And, and the point is, yes, we have a transformer for 25 kVA, uh, 50 kVA, and uh, when customers apply for power, we do provide, depending on the funding scheme, uh, a transformer, not necessarily which will serve one person, but a transformer that can serve that local community and, uh, and do maximization. We currently are doing a very heavy maximization program with some funding from EIB, European Investment Bank, uh, EU, European Union, and Africa. Uh, is that Africa Development Bank or the French Bank? AFD. AFD. And we have another AFD3. The first one is 22 billion. We have another 15 billion on OFD3 which is currently uh, being rolled out, and a lot of them are on maximization. So where uh, you see one person, two person, ten persons being connected, we are, if that transformer can serve 70 people, 80 people, 100 persons, we have done surveys, some of the plans have been finished, and we are working very closely with the members of parliament to maximize. A lot of this money I've just spoken to are going to maximization, and therefore, uh, more utilization of that asset that currently is not sweating because it is having a few people 
when it should be serving a, a larger number or maximized to that extent. Uh, in fact, the last mile is becoming more easy in the highly populated areas because we're just doing maximization. Of course, the, mass, the last mile is more difficult where we have reached today as we service the more difficult areas.